Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from Waterloo Station south of the river to Brixton in South London. This ride takes a little over 20 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport the same journey takes around half an hour by bus or requires a change of tube lines so it makes a lot of sense to cycle this route. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it then please don't forget to hit subscribe on YouTube as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well you can find a link in the description below the video. Alright let's get going. So we're starting inside Waterloo Station on the eastern side near Platform 1 and we're going to go out onto Cab Road. There's a little gap in the fence here and if you can't squeeze through it for whatever reason there is a more accessible entrance just around the corner. Cab Road as the name suggests is used largely just by cabs and taxis as well as buses serving the station so it is pretty quiet. Incidentally this back way into Waterloo Station is really useful if you're getting the bus there from South London as you can get off a couple of stops early around Lower Marsh and save yourself a few minutes by walking up this way. We're going to turn off for this path on Leach Street and although there are no signs banning cycling on this path I'm actually going to set a good example and dismount here as it looks a little bit too narrow to cycle down without upsetting pedestrians. Once you're back on the road though you can just get back on your bike. Now it's tempting to just go straight ahead here with the bike signals and that is an option but we're actually going to go left and use the Toucan Crossing here which is allowed as you can see by the cycle symbols on the crossing. Going this way takes us into Carlisle Lane rather than Upper Marsh, both of which are streets under the railway, but this one is a little bit more direct for the direction that we're going in towards Brixton. You've got a couple of options here. You can either keep going and turn left in a second, or you can turn left here down Centaur Street. They're both more or less the same, kind of dingy streets that are really in need of resurfacing. And I apologise for the poor picture quality going through the tunnels as the image stabilisation on the camera doesn't work so well in the dark. We're now on Hercules Road and we're going to pass this lovely little traffic filter here which is a bollard in the middle of the road that prevents through traffic from going down here and keeps these streets really nice and quiet and really just access only and therefore turns it into a really nice cycle route for us. When you get to the junction here make sure you pay attention to the special bike traffic lights just down here which show green slightly before the main traffic light, giving us a bit of a head start over other traffic. As we turn onto Sale Street, you might want to give this little miniature cycle lane a miss, as it's in a pretty poor state of repair with overflowing drains, overgrown weeds, and some big planks of wood, which look like they could be quite dangerous in the dark. As you approach this junction going into Ingram Close, you might want to slow down, and just check that there's no traffic coming across you, as it is quite difficult to tell. The same goes for this junction at the other end of Ingram Close too. Just have a little look to make sure that no one's speeding down there. I've always thought that both those junctions could use cycle zebra crossings to make it easier to cross there and also maybe with some speed bumps as cars approach them just to keep their speed down. One reason that might be justified is because we're actually on an official TFL cycle route here. It's Cycleway 5 and we're going to be following it for the next bit of our journey. This junction, incidentally, would probably benefit from a, uh, a cycle zebra crossing as well, just to give people priority down the cycleway and to make it a bit more pedestrian friendly at the same time. One thing I really like about this street, if you look on the left there, is uh, the sort of planting that's been added to the roadway. That's sustainable drainage. Um, it's called suds. There's a bit more here. And uh, that's actually to prevent flooding. And uh, it also just makes the place feel a bit better. And on particularly hot days, it actually cools the street environment, which is uh, pretty cool. There's more on the right there. I think it's a really good way of doing it. And uh, Lambeth actually recently announced its new curbside strategy, which um, is one of the first of its kind in the country, I think. And it basically talks about how the council wants to change the way that curbside space is used in this borough that we're in now. And uh, there'll be a lot more of that on other roads. So it has sort of provisions like a tree every 50 metres on a build-out every street to have uh, a bench or a place to rest and I think that's a really positive development. It's not necessarily directly related to cycling but it's uh, the sort of thing that could just make the environment a little bit nicer to live in. 
Careful as you pull out onto that cycleway, by the way, as it's a bit of a blind corner for people coming out of the bridge. And uh, we had a green light there to cross the road, but normally you'd have to wait for uh, a green traffic signal to go across. And it puts you on this really nice protected cycleway on Harleford Road. And you know what? I really wish that they would continue this all the way down the road to Peckham. Um, but unfortunately, it stops around Kennington Oval. This was filmed on a, uh, a weekend morning, so uh, it's relatively quiet out. There's not too many people either driving or cycling or even walking. But uh, if you were to come here at rush hour on a weekday, this, this uh, track is absolutely rammed with people cycling down to South London. Uh, it's a very, very popular route. When you build this kind of infrastructure, people like to use it. Now be careful as you turn off right here. It's a bit of a, a tight corner and uh, there might be someone coming in the opposite direction as there was here if we'd been a few seconds later. But uh, yeah, it's pretty well signposted. Don't forget to follow that C5 arrow around the corner onto Meadow Road. If you're enjoying the video, by the way, don't forget to hit subscribe and you can also hit the bell icon which will alert you for new videos. Um, I try to post new videos pretty much every week. And uh, if you really, really like what we're doing on the channel and you're a regular viewer, you could always consider contributing to the Patreon as well. And uh, thanks very much to everyone who does that. There's a link in the description for anybody else who would like to join them. The route that we're on at the moment is still following Cycleway 5, and it's actually through the Oval Low Traffic neighbourhood, uh, the Oval Triangle, it's sometimes called. And that was uh, introduced by Lambeth Council, and it removes through traffic from, uh, from streets like this. So it's generally very quiet, although you can still run into the odd car here and there because access is obviously maintained to the whole of the area. It just removes through traffic. Um, it may seem a little bit twisty and turny, but it's actually not too difficult to follow those C5 signs. If you feel like you need maybe a little bit of extra help, you can always download the map of the route that I've done. I do a map of all the routes, so all the videos on this channel, and you can always download them by going to the description of the video, and there'll be a link to a website called Komoot and you can download the GPS, GPX file there. And uh, you can use that on whatever app or device you, uh, you like. It's a standard format. Slightly annoying situation here. This guy on my right just decides to overtake me in lane just as we pull off at the crossing. I don't know whether that's allowed or not, but it certainly felt very unpleasant to be on the receiving end of that driving. We've actually turned off Cycleway 5 here, and we're going to go down Guildford Street. I'm just admiring those modernist buildings on the left. Really interesting. I love those kind of walkways that connect the blocks. And uh, around here, there's a really nice mix of different styles. And that's one thing I really like about London is the different styles of architecture. The reason that we've cut off C5 is because it really cuts a corner. Um, we want to cross this road here. And if you look on your left coming up, that's Stockwell Bus Garage, which is quite a well-known modernist kind of brutalist building you can see the buses in there um, it's really quite an impressive structure uh, it's around the back of Stockwell tube station the entrance is actually just coming up here on the left if you ever want to poke your head in there you can see more buses as we go past now that's actually Stockwell tube station just ahead there that's the rear of it and you can see there's a bus there this street is generally traffic free apart from access but some bus routes do use it although Studley Road that we're on now um, it's far too narrow with the two sides of parking and if two cars come in opposite directions then they can't pass each other and it immediately becomes chaos so I think that needs sorting out. Head for the corner here, we're going to turn left and go up this drop curb. This little shopping precinct area could really be a much nicer pedestrian plaza for the cafes and stuff that are there and it would be good to have a cycle route going through there as well connecting to the other side of the street with some sort of crossing. Um, we had to use the bus lane there briefly on Clapham Road, not the end of the world. When you're coming there in the opposite direction, you actually don't have to use the bus lane. You can just cross the road straight and loop around the little sort of parking access road that's in front of the shops. If you want to see a video demonstration of that, then check out my Loughborough Junction to Battersea Power Station video, which features that crossing, but in the opposite direction. Now, Lingham Street that we're on now is generally pretty quiet, although I uh, believe that Lambeth is actually going to include it in uh, a forthcoming low traffic neighbourhood over the next couple of years called Stockwell Gardens, LTN, and uh, this whole area should get a little bit quieter when that goes in. Talking of LTNs, we're heading into another one now, Ferndale LTN, which is uh, now a permanent scheme. And one thing I'd love to point out is on the left here, the beautiful looking pub, 
the Marquis of Lawn. Great pub, very cheap, very down to earth and uh, cash only actually so make sure you bring some pounds. Now coming up at the end of this road is a little community park called Papa's Park and there's an attached cafe called Papa's Cafe and that's actually related to the curbside strategy that I mentioned earlier in the video because one thing that the council wants in the curbside strategy is to have shared cargo bikes for hire in every neighborhood and if you look on your right there you can just see that green and black thing that's one there and that one's actually managed by Papa's Cafe and you can rent it. Um, so if you need to, you know, carry something home from the shop, something big, you can just go on the app and uh, and rent a cargo bike. And uh, that's actually the council's plan for every neighbourhood in the borough. They want it so that everyone will be no more than five minutes walk away from a cargo bike, which I think will be fantastic. Um, really, really big change in mobility. There's also a plan for every high street to have a shared electric van, which would hopefully reduce you know, a number of businesses that needed their own van as well. Um, really exciting stuff. Um, I can talk more about that in future videos maybe. And hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. Um, and thanks very much for watching that, guys. I think you've, if you look at that route, you can see it's a pretty direct one despite avoiding main roads. And it was really a pleasant ride as well. Um, really good way to get between Waterloo and Brixton. I'm always interested in the comments in what people think of the route, what other routes they might take. Um, you know, if you just bomb it down Brixton Road, then uh, feel free to tell me. But uh, I'll see you again next time. Link below for the Patreon. Don't forget to hit subscribe and to like the video so other people can find it. Thank you and good night.